Welcome to the 15th episode of the Game 4 Podcast. In this episode, we will be discussing how to get your family into tabletop gaming. Um, I'm Adam. I'm Matt. And we are part of Milk Can, and we make an app called Game 4. Game 4 is a, uh, it's a platform, really. It's, to, it's a you know, mobile app for Android or iOS. It's also a website. For connecting tabletop gamers, that's kind of the main thing. It's got um, information. That you, you, you've got a big event list of games going on in your area, looking for players. You can find other Game 4 users who are looking to play mm-hmm. things. You've got conventions, clubs. You've got a store finder database with over 6,700 stores worldwide. So pretty much anywhere you go, you can find the closest game store, which is often kind of hard, actually. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Um, but that's what we do, so you should check it out. Uh, let's see. What have we been doing since the last episode? Since episode fourteen. So I finally got my board game on. I haven't played board games in who had been been a while. Yeah. So I went to a friend's house and played board games for a good majority of the day. Mm-hmm. So uh, we started with a game called Clip Cut Parks. Clip Cut Parks. Yes, it's a deceptively light game that takes a little bit of puzzling. Uh, so you start with a basically a gridded paper. Mm-hmm that has a bunch of different uh, areas, colors, and stuff like that. And then you have uh, random uh, cards that you have to, you're each given scissors, and you have to cut based on what the die roll is. Like say the dice will come, the die will roll up like a one, three, and a three. Mm -hmm. So you now have to cut a one grid worth, and then three grids worth, and three grids worth. You can't overlap. And then once a piece falls out, you have to either use it or scrap it. And so you're trying to make these weird shapes, and they have to cover the the right color has to co- cover, and so it's kind of a puzzle game to it's, some degree, yeah, so but with some randomness. Why is it called Clip Cut Parks? I'm assuming so that they can release thousands of other versions of this game. I mean, did the designs look like a park? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All sorry. Right. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So gotcha. it was like wa- there was like water and trees and oh, okay. field sure. and. So then they could do cities, they could do farms, they could do lots of different stuff, yep. and they would all be kind of topographical. That's yep. kind of that's kind of cool. So yeah, it was it was all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we played a game that was amazing, so amazing that I ended up buying it myself. Really? Uh, Cthulhu Death May Die. Nice. Um, it was a Kickstarter game. Yeah. Um, we were lucky enough to one of our local game stores um, has been doing a lot of the retailer options for Kickstarters lately. Yeah, so uh, stores can, like a lot of Kickstarters these days will have a special, like, uh, what do you call them, level or whatever? Yeah. yeah, like where if you're a retailer, you can do this and then you'll get, you know, like, but it's almost you, like you're you getting get, them kind of wholesale to yeah, some degree. Right. And you're getting a bunch of them and maybe it, they have a different type of packaging too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they ended up having it. I uh, didn't realize that they had it. I just went there afterwards. At and, the local store. Uh, yeah, I was talking to the store owner, and he goes, hey, but did you see that we just got this in? And I'm like, amazing. And they had a really good deal on it. It was about half of what uh, it's going for on eBay right now. Oh, nice, nice. So, but yeah. Because it's not, I don't, is it in stores yet for people who didn't get into a Kickstarter? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I mean, I think it will be. It's yeah. Because like, it's Cool Mini, right? It's, yeah, it's so Simon. Simon, yeah. right. Yeah. So Simon. Well, come on now. Right? Yeah, I don't know how they want to pronounce it. But, um that one is, from what I understand, like they definitely are going to put that out to distribution at some I'm, point. But I, I would, bet you it's yeah, probably be a shocked bit because, of a ways yeah, away. Yeah, because they've got two seasons already. But yeah, lots and lots of minis. Did you buy the giant honkin' uh, Cthulhu? I did not. So for those of you who have not seen it, uh, just take a look. Uh, just go on Google or whatever and like, take a yeah, look search at Search up uh, this game and look yeah. and do giant. Or yeah, whatever. just it, just like uh, Cthulhu Death May Die um, and then... You Google a uh, toddler sized miniature because it is yeah. seriously, it is like <laughs> I've seen pictures and it is seriously the size of a two year old. Oh, it's yeah. just this monstrous miniature is obviously not the right word. Um, I like to call them bigatures. Uh, and it, uh, it, yeah, it just, it's like it's, it's Cthulhu coming out of the water in between two pillars. Yeah. And uh, I got a friend who's a commission painter who painted one for a client and it was just pictures on his Instagram of him. Like normally when you paint miniatures, you're like, holding on to the miniature in one hand and painting with the other hand, right. you know, that kind of stuff. And he was airbrushing this miniature and he just had it sitting on his lap. Yep. Like he couldn't even fit it on the table. It was so big. And then he was just, yeah, you, you wouldn't know. find a paint handle big enough. For no, this no, that wouldn't work. But it was, um, it was pretty interesting. So, um, and Cthulhu got back. Yes. Uh, he's got a weird, <laughs> bumpy sort of suction cuppy, 
uh, posterior, yeah. Posterior, yeah. yeah. That's kind of <laughs> weird. But yeah, the game itself is actually uh, pretty fun. It's mm-hmm. uh, uh, kind of similar to, well, it's a cooperative game, so you're basically your. Uh, uh, but uh, what's nice is it's asymmetrical, so each of your characters are different, and so there's some powers that you know are kind of common among different ones. Sure. Um, and then each character has one that's kind of directly, you know, ties to their character. Um, some are historical characters like Lizzie Borden and Rasputin. Like Rasputin's, uh, oh, nice. his special ability is that uh, he can die multiple times. Yeah, but that's kind of par for the course, really. So yeah, and you can power, you choose how you power up during the game to make right. yourself more powerful and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's actually uh, surprisingly fun because I I'm not always a big Cthulhu fan. I feel like a lot of the Cthulhu games are kind of lackluster. I know there's people that love them, so I oh, apologize sure, sure. to those yeah, people. Yeah. But this was definitely one that. Well, this is your idea. This is what you feel. Yeah, so for my, in my, yeah, in my opinion, this was is by far the, the, my favorite. Nice, and yeah, the, yeah. yeah, and the amount of miniatures and sculpting is just amazing. Yeah, so. yeah, no, it does sound kind of cool. I've, and I remember seeing, I think I saw it at Gen Con, the giant honking. Uh, that's a technical term, giant honking Cthulhu. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but that he was painted um, by this real high end um, Spanish or Italian. I don't remember. Uh, paint, uh, commission painter mm. uh, guy. Uh, I think he's Spanish. Um, it's, it's spelled Angel, but I know it's pronounced on hell, kind of roughly. Okay. And he's, um, yeah, he does really, really good work. And it was amazing looking. Uh, it was up mm. kind of on a pedestal, sort of. And I saw it at uh, at Gen Con. And uh, yeah, the the work looked really, really, really good. So, um, yeah. yeah. And then I uh, then the last game we played, uh, one of the guys had to leave, so we wanted something a little bit lighter so we played a game called uh, horrified mm-hmm. which uh is basically the a game that involves the universal monsters so like um oh like universal mummy. universal studios monsters yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the mummy the uh De- dracula invisible, invisible man invisible man swamp thing swamp thing right uh, not swamp thing uh, the thing uh, uh, the black lagoon yes Creature black, from the black yes, lagoon one, yes uh tom cruise the mummy I said that. Well, one I was just saying Tom Cruise because it's funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah. There's a there's a a bunch of them. Um, they were gonna try to bring that back. Yeah. And then this game maybe was maybe linked to that. It could have been. Came out with that new Mummy movie and it didn't work super yeah. high. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of people Jekyll confused and because it was called just the Mummy and. Right, and we've done that a couple of times yeah. with Brandon Fraser. Yeah, so or three times. I know. I was confused at <clears> first. <throat> I thought that was something in that line. I didn't realize they were trying to reboot. That, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. No. But anyway, but yeah, that one was that one was kind of fun too. Yeah. So, so the game was probably better than maybe the movies. Yeah, I would I say that that's probably a safe bet. For, I do at least for me. To see the mummy movie. Yeah, I, don't I don't know why. I, yeah, I just do. Um, how about you? Oh, and I, I did oh, yeah. more D and D. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. you were playing and uh, yeah. Did you have a bunch of tiles and stuff, or were you? Uh, no, doing, I'm, you I'm, know? I'm still got to get that. Still chewing on. Yeah, and, and the. It's a lot of dungeons that they can get through in one session, so I, I haven't figured out exactly how I'm doing it yet. So. Yeah, that's always the issue with the dungeon tiles are a great idea, but you need to have a lot because the the issue is if you only build one room at a time, right? then if they decide, oh, let's go through this door, you're like, all right, and then you have to build that next room, and then they're like, well, let's go back, and they're like cats then. They're like, are they going in? Are right. you staying out? What are you doing? And then, you know, and, and then you're... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and just like for, you know, all D&D players, no matter what I plan, they're not going to do that. Right, no, yeah, not that's the last thing they're going to do. So... Yeah, that's def- definitely so, true. But, the, yeah, I think it's probably the last one we'll, we'll get in this year. Uh, the holidays. So not with the holidays coming up, um, but uh, we're almost through the first level of that yeah dungeon so oh, that's cool only how many levels are there 16 17 to go oh gosh yeah that's a lot of levels yeah all right well that's fine um how about you uh well i've been uh, i've still been as is as i've said in the last several episodes cleaning and organizing my basement and then uh parentheses sad face emoji at least that's what it says here in the notes uh, yeah, so it's been not going quickly, uh, and also I've been helping my mom a lot. She's been, as I mentioned in the past, she's been, uh, she broke her leg, and so she's been not home, luckily. She's still at a facility and all that stuff, so they can keep, an, you know, they she can, uh, her apartment is not wheelchair 
ready in any fashion. Mm-hmm. So she needs to be a little bit more healed before she can go back. So I've been doing kind of dealing with that and uh, and other stuff. But I have been sneaking away a little bit. Okay. Even though uh, I was like, all right, I'm not going to do any hobbying until I get the basement finished because it's kind of the carrot and the stick sort of a situation. Um, have you been cheating on yourself? Well, it, it a little bit because it's, it's the stress relief, you know what I mean? Mm. Like the hobby for me is like the stress relief and then there's been a bunch of stress. So uh, I have been sneaking away a little bit here and there and been doing some kind of kit bashing and building. Um, I'm mm. building uh, a couple. My plan is that to build a couple war bands for um, mainly for a game called Star Breach, mm-hmm. which is uh, something you can find online. It is got a free download of the PDF, but they also sell like if you want a, a hardcover. There was kind of like a not quite Kickstarter thing going on that they okay. did about a month ago and uh in 2020 they'll be releasing a soft cover that you could buy but otherwise the pdf is is free there's like a fancy schmancy pdf it's like 10 bucks you can Mm. get that too um but it's a sci-fi uh skirmish miniatures game that has no attached uh model line so you can pick it kind of pick your own right and so uh some friends of mine and i have this idea that we want to make kind of like like we're gonna play and it's gonna be fun and it'll be great, but we're also what we're really doing is trying to spend some time on the actual war bands to make them look really cool and stuff like that. So, nice. I've been doing a little bit of that where I'm, you know, cutting off this arm and then putting on a different arm and putting on different heads and, and different stuff like that. Sure. And not well, just, and, th- and that's what kid bashing is for those that don't. Yeah, know. exactly. It's it's not building the model the way it was originally intended. It's taking stuff from other kits and then kind of bashing them together. Don't yeah. actually bash them. because Yeah, you don't usually break the actual parts. The parts will go all over the place, yeah. and you'll lose them in the basement. Yeah, in fact, we were just talking about uh, Adam Savage kit bashing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's, he's on got his a, tested uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, d- uh, yeah. if you get a chance, check it out. It's uh, like one of his one-day builds, and he's building like a Star Wars-type uh, sci-fi vehicle yeah. uh, with styrene and kit bashing basically in the day. I mean, that's the way that those things were done back in the day. Yeah. Like, and he used know, to work at, at, at ILM. IDL, yeah, ILM, yes. yeah it's at uh, Industrial Light and Magic, the people who did Star Wars, he worked on, I think he worked on the prequels, didn't yep. he? Yeah. So in those situations, a lot of times those models are, you know, they build the, the Millennium Falcon and they take bits from World War II models and all kinds yeah. of stuff and they yeah, glue a, all the yeah. weird crap on the outside of the spaceship. Yeah, he, yeah, through it, he points out, he's like, yep, this one is, if you look here, and you know, it's on this model and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it was kind of neat. To, yeah. Cause, so, because when he's doing it, you're like, that doesn't look good. And then you know, once he kind of gets it all placed, and then he starts priming, and then and everything, everything comes, comes together. Just, and you're yeah. like, wow. Well, I mean, because back then they didn't have three D printing, right? You know, nowadays they're like, well, if we wanted to look like this, we could just crank out a bunch of parts mm-hmm. ourselves. Back then they had to use parts that were already being made, right? Know, or else have to somehow you know mill each piece, which obviously takes up an incredible amount of time. Mm-hmm. And those movie people are always about getting things done as quickly as possible. Yep. Um. So let's see. We've got a question from the audience. We All haven't, right. We haven't had one for a while, but we've yeah, got a bunch we of actually, good ones. We get, our, our mailbox is filling up pretty good right it's now. It's doing nice. But, but keep them coming. Yeah, keep absolutely. Them. If you've got questions, definitely um, let us know. You can send them. You can put them in the comments on YouTube. You can send them to us on Facebook. You can go to podcast at imgame4.com, which I'll mention again at the end of the, 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 the podcast here. But yeah, you can definitely send us questions. And if you send us a question and we read it on the air, we will send you an official uh, T-shirt that is that you can't get in stores. Right. Uh, it's not available on television. Limited edition. Uh, limited edition, and that we only, we only make them for the people who uh, answer the questions. Right. So uh, we'll be reaching out to Brian here, whose question we're going to read, and uh, send, uh, finding out what uh, size T-shirt they need and sending that away. Um, and not only is it this the question for the episode, but it's also what sparked the topic so it's going to be right. kind of a rather than in, in the past where we were like oh hey here's a question we talk about it and then we um you know go on with whatever the subject is we were like looking at this question and it's a good question and we think it's yeah. also a good topic so yeah. we're going to kind of tie them together yeah so um let's see here you want me to read it uh yeah okay so hello adam and matt what type oh sorry what tips can you offer for getting kids family into gaming and hobbying I have an 11-year-old daughter and an 8-year-old son. They've shown an interest in gaming and hobbying. My issue is the fact that I've only been in the hobby for about a year, so I'm not sure what the best steps methods would be. Adam's videos, which he's talking to about uh, Tabletop Minions, sure. your YouTube channel, mm-hmm. were the foundation for my introduction. 
I had zero exposure to the tabletop gaming hobby and minimal exposure to board gaming and video games growing up, so I lacked the background experience. Rehab played a couple rounds of Kill Team. They seem to enjoy those. They've also painted a couple of box walkers in WizKids figures. They seem to want to paint when we don't have time and don't want to when we have time. <laughs> well, that's that's <laughs> kids as well, kids. kind of to some degree. Um, so, yeah, so this person, uh, Brian's talking about um, not just, like, tabletop wargaming, which is kind of my thing, but also talking a bit about also board gaming and, and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Brian's mentioning playing a couple of rounds of Kill Team, which is made by Games Workshop. It's kind of their small skirmish kind of sci-fi yep. game that's based off of their wildly popular I, War I will 40,000. I will get mine painted. Oh, yeah, no, I know. It's, <laughs> you're getting very close. Looking forward to it. Um, and then... But then they talk about pox walkers, which are kind of like these weird sort of zombie dudes that um, Games Workshop makes. And okay. then the WizKids figures are the unpainted... But primed. But primed uh, figures that you can get at your local game store made by WizKids. Um, they make them for... They have a license for Dungeons & Dragons and also for Pathfinder, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of the reference there. Um, and then, of course, the part about they want to seem to paint when we don't have time and they don't want to paint when we do have time. That's that's just kids. Um, for the most part, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's... I mean, I think it's a good question, finding out, like, how do you get not just... Yeah. not just like children but also like maybe your spouse you know right you yeah know? so yeah it, you know yeah the spouse or someone that you enjoy spending time with that you'd like to be able to spend time in your hobby with the in-laws cousins all kinds of different yeah. things yeah that makes sense brothers sisters yeah so the, the the question or i guess the the first thing to figure out when you are uh trying to plan to do this is number one is there even an interest Right. Don't don't uh, pull up in a van, haul them into the van, and take them to your gaming club night. Well, that's maybe a bit extreme, I suppose. Yeah. No, I was <laughs> just thinking of like you know, if you say to your spouse, let's say, uh, "Hey, I would you know, let's uh, let's get to we should try out some um, Magic the Gathering," or would you like to uh, join the group we're playing Dungeons and Dragons or or whatever? Um, if they say no. Then that's generally right there. That kind of that's the end. Yeah, or like um, I, I'd rather stab myself or you know, right. Yeah, those no, extreme, if it's yeah. extreme, then that's bad. Um, but uh, you know, you may say, "Hey, would you be interested in playing Dungeons and Dragons and, with us?" And that could be seen as uh, daunting to some people mm-hmm. because you know, there's like, like I don't personally want to play Dungeons and Dragons with folks I don't know. Like I've been to. Mm you know, conventions before and at, at big game conventions or even small game conventions, there's a lot of role playing that goes on. Yeah. You've played uh, I have. stuff at uh, like Fire and Ice yeah. that we go to in um, uh, Manitowoc, which is coming yeah. up end of February. Yeah, so a couple yeah, yeah. months. Yeah. So a couple months from now. But yeah, the anxiety level for me going into that was, even though I have done it before, it's still just kind of like, well, are these people going to think I'm an idiot or... Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. It's, it's See, for me, it's just yeah, yeah. For me, it's a situation. I don't know if. Well, maybe it's anxiety. Am I role playing too too much, or am I not role playing enough? Yeah, or? I don't know what it is for me. Honestly, it's it's something along the lines of I think that I just I don't f- I don't feel like playing a role like the not mm. not that you're acting particularly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the I don't know. Like if, if if I don't know people, I guess I'm not quite comfortable enough mm-hmm. to to do it right and I don't know. Then that maybe does become kind of an anxiety thing. So that's one thing. Saying to say a spouse, let's say, "Hey, would you like to do, you know, some some Dungeons and Dragons or whatever with our group or whatever?" Right. That could be seen, but on and, the other and hand, then, and if they do say no, sure. What, what one thing I found is, like especially for kids, is say, oh, well, if you do ever have that interest, let me know. Sure, yeah. Because if you say no, and then like a, like a, six months goes by, and then like, man, I wish I had said yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. want to make it? Don't you know? Following up. Let them that. know. Let them know that they can you know change their mind. It's, yeah, it totally makes sense. And if they say yes, the opposite is true. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But it, it, if if the one thing that you breach is, uh, or you know, one idea that you broach, uh, and say, "Hey, let's do this," or are you interested in doing that? If they say no, then you could try something else. Like you know, if you say, "Are you interested in playing Dungeons and Dragons?" Let's say, and they say no, like, okay, well, what about 
maybe you'd be more interested in board games or maybe you'd yeah. be more interested in a card game or maybe still in that genre and like but you, they, you, they just, that top is just doesn't grab them like maybe like yeah. bike with bikes with kids or sure you know something that's maybe more at their interest level i mean and, and also knowing people in your family mm. which you should if you know that your husband hates fantasy just elves and dwarves and all that stuff just makes him angry or whatever i don't know mm-hmm. uh or, or sleepy i don't know whatever um <laughs> then then don't go hey would you be interested in playing some uh, dungeons and dragons like knowing that up front may, right. may make some sense i yeah, understand you, well, what maybe is leading to that no right but you might be able to be like well but would you be interested in playing star wars role-playing game or mm-hmm. uh, paranoia or you know there's a lot of other ones if you're interested in those types of games as well right um also, you know, be uh, be cognizant of like when you are doing those, your hobby, like painting or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, how they're interacting. Like if they're showing interest, asking questions and stuff yeah. like that. Oh yeah. Make sure you follow up with that. Like I know my kids are like the first time I started painting, they're like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. then I started showing them stuff, and uh, the oldest did try it out a little bit. He mm-hmm. just said it wasn't really for him right now, mm-hmm. but that's okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, just kind of. I don't know, I'm doing this and sometimes just letting them watch maybe they're not interested in participating now but uh later on you know I know growing up if I saw you know my dad doing woodworking yeah. I didn't really want to go and cut up wood with a uh, with a uh, saw and all that fun stuff but uh now I really enjoy doing it so oh yeah it's something that I, I kind of had to grow into at you know so when I was younger my dad would take me fishing and uh and i was not mm. super interested in fishing so i'd be screwing around like throwing rocks in the water and yes. whatever and all that kind of stuff and, um, fish don't like that they, they, they don't they're not they're not super fans of it and then my dad wasn't a super fan of that either particularly mm. um but i was also like pretty young and sitting still and watching yeah. a bobber is a was difficult it, thing was it on the shore or on in a boat uh w- both i mean you know we would sometimes go fishing on a boat we would go and uh we stayed in this um cabin once per summer usually and they had a rowboat and mm. so you could rowboat out and it was a really shallow lake so it wasn't a particularly you know big deal as far as like you know if 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 i fell out i could probably walk back it was okay. yeah it was shallow and, and sandy on the bottom um but uh, i do remember falling into the river one time mm. because i was messing around uh and that was and it was like early fall too Ooh, so cold. So it was cold and that river's got a bit of a undertow and stuff like that so luckily my dad grabbed me out but uh as i got older when my dad stopped fishing that's when i was kind of like it would have been nice to sit there you know mm. and and cause, cause, yeah you know i was in my 20s and i could sit there and and uh and, and have a beverage and and watch a bobber and talk about right. things or whatever but yeah. when you're like nine it's kind of hard sometimes so right. gauging that i think is a little important mm-hmm. too but all that being said i have also seen people who've got kids that they've gotten into painting miniatures at a, at a young age. You mm-hmm. know? Um, when I was uh, this year, when I was at uh, Origins, um, my friend uh, Jason from Realmsmith TV, <clears throat> the, the Twitch channel and all that stuff, he was teaching classes at uh, Origins, uh, miniature painting classes, uh, working with Vallejo and WizKids. Like, you know, yep. we, were, we were painting the WizKids models. And um, I taught one class every day to kind of give him a break and everything. So, um, But when I would be there teaching, his son would be there up in front with me painting. And like he, that kid painted, and he was uh, 12-ish, mm. painted in every single class. Like wow. he just wanted to paint as much as possible. That's awesome. And um, and so, yeah, so so it depends on the kid to mm-hmm. some degree. You absolutely. Know? Um, absolutely. Yeah. And also on the spouse. I mean, you know, in some situations... Like, my wife is a big fan of board games, um, and she's kind of interested in playing war games, like miniatures and such, Mm -hmm. but she's got pretty much no interest in painting and stuff, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Um, There are plenty of gateway games that work out well that way. Right. Um, And and to some degree, um, you know... The, the gateway game thing is is a good lead in in a lot of situations right yeah right yeah they're they're a good thing but you know but you need to understand how to get them to, to agree to play that gateway I think is where we're trying to lead yeah 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 um, with gateway games what when I talk about gateway games on, on my YouTube channel I'm normally talking about a game that is between let's say board gaming and miniature gaming I'm talking about how to get somebody who's already probably kind of a gaming hobbyist 
into miniatures of mm-hmm. the four main genres. Sure. And we, and we have that, that filter at the bottom of the, the Game 4 app that has board games, uh, RPGs, CCGs, which is collectible card games, and then war games. And then you can filter and say, oh, I don't like to play CCGs, so I don't want to see any events for that, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You can turn those on and off. Of those, war games is the smallest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so... And it's also, in my opinion, one of the hardest to get into to some degree because of the building and painting and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if you tell somebody, hey, I'm interested in playing a collectible card game, you buy some decks and then you learn. Um, You know, if you say, I'm interested in playing a board game, you open the box, you read the instructions, and then you play. In miniatures, you've got stuff to build, stuff to paint, that kind of jazz. So convincing someone who's new to it is difficult, but there are games out there like Zombicide is a really good one. That's right. kind of like a board game, but starting to head towards miniatures right. and stuff like that. X-Wing because it's pre-painted. X-Wing because it's pre-painted and there's not a lot of building. But the thing about X-Wing is is that it's got a well-known and well-loved intellectual property. Right. And that's the thing. If you're trying to get somebody, into, let's say, straight into board gaming who doesn't do any kind of hot Right. Gaming, they're like, I, I, board games. And, you know, usually right. the, there's something they're like, oh, I've played Monopoly. And sure, yeah. I, the, that's the not my thing. Board games aren't, aren't my thing. Right. But if you're like, well, but what kind of movies do you like? And mm-hmm. they're like, well, you know, I like this, this, and they're like, well, do you like, um, you know, Those Big Big Trouble in Little China? Mm-hmm. And then they go, oh, yeah, no, I love that movie. And you're like, well, there's a board game. You know what I mean? Or, or, you or know, yeah, yeah, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. I mean, if you're into Cthulhu, you know, if they like that kind right. of stuff, you know, um, there's a lot of different types of intellectual properties that are really like if the person likes this thing very frequently there's a game that is either that exact thing Mm -hmm. a licensed version you know that's a board game or an rpg i know there's now a it just i just saw a thing come across my email about the new um oh what the heck is it the uh shoot yeah uh aliens oh yes yeah the alien is it Mm -hmm. aliens or alien uh, I think it's actually aliens this okay. time. Yeah, yeah, there's marines a, and stuff. R- an RPG. Yep. Yeah. So there's a role playing game based off of that, and I've I've heard good things about it. I heard good things about it at Gen Con actually. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, but now it's I think actually out. Before I think it was in like beta or whatever they were testing. Yeah. It or whatever. And but they had like a free printable version you could check out, and mm. now it's like in stores or yeah, whatever. Star Trek. A lot of RPGs. Oh yeah. Like Fallout exactly. is in. RPGs. Yep, there's a Fallout to the Fallout to video game. There's a, an RPG for that. So, so knowing that you've got um, maybe kids that are interested in, like, I don't think there's any. There's not like a Fortnite, you know, like no board but game. Or, kids with bikes is kind of similar to like Stranger Things. Yeah, no, that's true. That's you get true. that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some other lighter weight RPGs. Mm-hmm. Not, I'm. I don't know enough. Ones I'm, I'm sure there's like ten right now that some there is a, someone listening right now that's screaming at us. Yeah, no. If you've got uh, some ideas of RPGs great for kids, definitely leave them in the comments on the YouTube yeah. or shoot us an email. Let us know. Um, but yeah, th- that type of thing I think is it's important um, to to use those types of games. Like I have a tendency to look at those kind of licensed games a lot of time and go, well. Yeah, you know, and, and admittedly, like especially us growing up, most of the time they were just cash grabs that were horrible. Oh yeah, and some of them still are. Let's some be perfectly oh, yeah. honest. Oh yeah. But that all being said, very frequently I'm not the the the, the target mm-hmm. for that audience. You know what I mean? I'm not you and me because we're already tabletop right. gamers in some fashion. We're not the person who's necessarily. A lot of times it's like it's used to be a gateway game like this. It's right. used to be something where. Oh well, you like Ghostbusters? Cool. Um, there's a Ghostbusters board game, and now you can learn about how to play board games and mm-hmm. whatever. Or there's a, you know, there was a Starship Troopers miniatures game, which didn't do super well, but that was for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know that type of stuff. Um, I'm staring at the Hellboy board game right over there uh, oh, from yes. Mantic, which is a great game. Uh, but it's a, uh, you know, it's also I I bought it. So I'm not a huge board game guy, but there's lots and lots of miniatures in there, which I do like, and also I'm a big fan of Hellboy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, they licensed games can work in those situations. Right. They don't always hit, but sometimes they do pretty well. Right, and sometimes you can hit, like, like Hellboy is a good example because they could be in the Hellboy because of the comics or because of the movies. Sure. Like, this one's based more off of the comics, just like also Mantic does a um, Walking Dead. Right. Uh, that's kind of a gateway comics, game. Right? It's more of a miniature game than a board game. Right. But it's also based off the comics, you're right, yep. not the TV show. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a lot of different things out there, obviously, for those types of, right. um, you know. And for, for kids, I know, like, uh, like 
kids are always into video games. You know, if right. I read That's anything what I was on talking about Fortnite, um, but like uh, like Pokemon, mm. like they've got the new game. Uh, what is the new one? Sword and Shield, I believe, is the newest one uh, for like the Switch. I think, yeah. Yep, and then uh, also Pokemon Go. I know. So yeah, my son started off with that side playing video games and. Uh, playing uh, Pokemon Go, and that is what got him into playing the ACCG. Oh, okay, yeah. Because he's under- finally understood all the characters and how yeah. they evolve, and then that's when he was like, "Oh, okay, I understand now. This is." And yeah. Then he got got into the collecting and trading and all that. Yeah, I mean, it's not for every kid. Um, you know, some kids are. I mean, most kids these days seem to be into video games to some degree. Yeah. Um. So there are some kind of overlaps there or kind of crossovers. Or, yeah. You know, and, and it's interesting to see, like, okay, I've been playing this game on the Game Boy or the Switch or whatever, and now I've got this very different but still same, uh, you know, the same characters, the same little Pokemons and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But now it's all cards. It's mm-hmm. cardboard. Um, but it is a bit more competitive and you're playing across from somebody right. kind of directly, which I know you can, I'm pretty sure you can play Pokemon against or with your friends or something like that on a video game. But I think that, I don't know, and it's not everybody, obviously, but yeah, if your kid's interested in that kind of stuff, if your kid's interested in Pokemon, then Pokemon collectible card game, if you're interested in CCGs, is, if, I mean, and by you, I mean, if you're interested in having, the downside is then you buy CCGs and there's boosters mm-hmm. and there's all that kind of jazz. Whereas with board games, you buy a board game generally once. Well, yeah, like um, the like Harry Potter, the um, oh yeah, Battle of Hogwarts is a spectacular board game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice thing too about that one is it's cooperative, mm-hmm. so you don't have to worry about uh, playing too easy or too hard against your kids. Oh sure. For, it's, yeah. Or your kids m- fighting with each other because right, yeah, you're yeah. all working towards a common goal, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and that way you can kind of teach and also let them kind of. Well, what if we do this? Or, yeah. you know, you could kind of lead them into that. And then the whole time they're like, oh, these are all the characters from the movies or from the books that I liked. Yeah. No, definitely finding those types of games, especially with kids, I think is a good kind of lead in for getting, you know, them in, involved. And I think that that's important because it's important for uh, the kids to get you know, that, that, that hook maybe, you mm-hmm. know. Um, it's maybe a little bit, I don't know. I think it's still effective with certain adults, mm-hmm. you know, but I think it's a little bit more effective with kids. Um, and, and then one of the things you, you, when when you're trying to get a family member into this is be willing to kind of go outside of maybe your preferred as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, I don't, never had an interest in Pokemon. Sure. But... I would play Pokemon with my kid to if that's what it, you know if I wanted to kind of get into CCGs I'm willing to you know kind of play that out so you know maybe it's not you know your end goal like mm-hmm. you want them to be you know the, your the 40k tournament player yeah well don't tell them they can only play 40k let them, right yeah you yeah know, let them play you know a, you know one that's more interested to them and so they can get into it and then maybe they'll have the interest you know like you're like well if you like this you know, this is, you know, a little bit more complicated. You know, explain why you like that one better. Well, and kids also, uh, it turns out they uh, grow and get older. No. No, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I don't have kids myself, but I'm pretty sure that's what they, that they do. Hmm. So a kid who's maybe um, interested in Pokemon card game early on and then later on becomes more interested in say Magic the Gathering or you know like if they really like the card mechanic right. and that's a thing and the trading and the whatnot and the combos then that's one thing um, you know or maybe like you know we've talked about in the past like like it's a difficult thing sometimes to get a kid well or an or a spouse into a collectible card game because then it, it is so competitive and it's also kind of it can be a bit of a money sink Mm-hmm. So there's that. We've talked about in the past uh, Keyforge right. from Fantasy Flight Games, which is a, a collectible card game but a different way where you're yeah. buying a deck and then that's it. You don't you don't constantly tweak and add I, cards and subtract I was, cards. I was at the hobby store last night uh-huh. and getting ready to check out with my – I think I was getting some new washes. Mm-hmm. And a, uh, he was probably about 10 or 11, uh, asked the store owner what this Keyforge thing was. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he said, you know, tried to explain it, you know, it was a collectible card. He's like, oh, it's like magic. He's like, yeah, but it's all pre-built. He goes, so not as good. 
<laughs> well, you like, know. Okay, well, th- that, that, that's, that's a, interesting. And yeah, so that's, then, a, that's an But then that led into a big discussion, and they were, he was explaining the differences, and then he's like, but we have tournaments about Key Forge, and you can compete. And he's like, wait, do you have tournaments for Magic? And Sorona's like, yes, we have multiple nights of this. And then the kid was just amazed and was going to start coming in to play on the Magic Night. See, that's, you know, every... Like you think the the thing is is that we many of us have a tendency to get close to gaming and then just assume that everybody knows about Friday mm-hmm. Night Magic or whatever you know, right. that kind of stuff. And when you're young or just new with the hobby, that's not uh, a foregone conclusion. Yeah, which is why being able to use an app that shows you uh, events in your local area. Hey, uh, call back there. Uh, but yeah, that that's I think that's 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 interesting. I mean, for me. Uh, for me, KeyForge is really cool because then I don't have to deck right. build. And I think if you're trying to get somebody new into the game and you're like, look, here's a deck. Okay, now you have to think about, like, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks how to tweak it and modify it and do all this stuff. That's kind of a pain. In right. this situation, you buy a deck. It costs 10 bucks. If you don't like it, you buy a different deck. Right. You know, and you don't. There is no blending but, of cards. But, or but if like they that. really like it and they're like, oh, but it'd be so cool if I could have done this combination. You know, and you're like, then you're ah, like, well, well you can in some other. Why game. don't you take a look at every other collectible card game right. out there? Pretty much, yeah, uh, which is fine. And and so being able to gauge not just like what your kids or spouse or whatever or or, or other fan type of family member, uncles, aunts, whatever, you know, like um, it, like trying to understand that again, like if I was gonna like you know the holidays are coming up, and if I'm gonna go to my in laws. And, uh, you know, uh, dinner is over and the dishes have been cleaned and stuff like that. And they're like, hey, let's uh, let's play a game. And I'm like, cool. And then I start bringing out terrain <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I set up a bunch of uh, chaos demons and, uh, and and sisters of battle and whatnot. They're they're not going to play. They're going to be like, can you move that so we can play? Uh, Strategio. You know, no. What's the one that we like to play sometimes that I d- that I did actually bring? Uh Roll for it by Calliope. Games. Oh, that's yeah. yeah. Which is, I mean, it's got no hook. There's no story to it. It's a dice rolling game, but it's not Yahtzee. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's still fun, kind of, and there's some strategy and whatnot, and that's cool. Um, so yeah, th- that's knowing your audience is, I think, super important in those situations. Um, and you know, but also knowing again, knowing what things they they dig. Like if you had a, uh, if you've got a family member that likes to paint ceramics or crafts mm-hmm. and stuff like that, then you'd be like, look, you can paint some terrain and I'll show you how to do it and whatever. And right. if you're really lucky, then maybe you get an extra person to help you paint your terrain. Yeah. You know, there's something there. Um, but and, and you could do it together. Like, maybe they, they decide they don't want to actually play the game, but they're like, oh, I really like doing this. Yeah, there's. I, I talk to uh, plenty of people, uh, couples, uh, or I, you know, they, they email or message me you know, through the, the YouTube channel. And um, it's a situation where one person generally plays but maybe sometimes both of them like to paint or one person paint plays, but the other person paints. Mm. So like, you know, I'm painting the models for my husband or wife and yeah. then they're the one that plays in the tournaments and stuff like that. Okay. Cause they want to play, but they don't like to paint. I like to paint, but I don't have an interest in playing. You know, like sometimes they'll play, oh, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. But um, like, that's the best of both worlds almost. Mm-hmm. If you can do that, if like, if, if I enjoy painting, but I would just be sitting on top of models that wouldn't then do anything, you know, um, versus if then, you know, if you've got somebody to paint for you almost and then you get to take the game, whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. It's also a situation if you're just sitting there painting by yourself, you know, that's not necessarily like if, if you're painting for no reason. There are people who love to do that, but there are all the people who are like, but it would be nice to sometimes, you know, do this for, for that other people would see it. Right. Actually. Now, the downside, of course, is that, you know, um, sometimes you uh, sometimes you end up being the painter in the family and your um, your spouse uh, picks an army you don't like so now you're mm. you know what i mean there's there's that to, to keep in, in in mind as well now you're painting a thousand orcs right or or something like that mm. and that maybe that's you don't like orcs or whatever right. or you're tired of green mm. you know that that's also a, a situation too um but once you actually d- determine what the game is like what are we going to play what's this thing that we're going to try to do um it's then time to start kind of teaching them right and, and you know how to play and we kind of talked a little bit about um, uh, cooperative games, you know, mm-hmm. and how sometimes those are really helpful for kids because then there's not any sibling rivalry shenanigans right. going on there. Um, and also, if you're playing with them, you're not playing against them mm-hmm. and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, like the, the, one of the 
first games that my oldest played with me uh, a lot mm -hmm. and to the point where we bought every expansion was uh, Castle Panic. Okay. Um, and exactly the reason was uh, I like I started out when we first started out he kind of let me alpha game it he just kind of wanted to watch as the monsters all got destroyed sure. and didn't win or you know and then as he started seeing what stuff was then he started making suggestions on what he wanted to do mm -hmm. and, and you know and then I, it became more of a 50 50 thing sure so yeah, yeah, yeah you kind of could grow and show them and stuff yeah no I think that that makes a lot of sense and I think that Understanding also that it is not, I don't believe that it is a good idea when you're teaching somebody a game to crush them in the game. It will, in many situations, drive them away from playing that game and potentially right. tabletop games in, in, in all ways. Right. I'm not saying you have to completely like baby them, but I think that if you're teaching, it's an important idea not to really concern yourself right. with winning or losing. And, and like, uh, um, like last night at the, at the game, they were actually demoing a game to uh, a parent who never played board games but mm -hmm. knew his kid probably wanted to play this board game was getting they were gift while they were gift wrapping they were gift wrapping for free which oh, was kind of nice. cool yeah, yeah. um i thought it was a great idea but while they were gift wrapping they had the game and they were demoing it to him so that he knew how to play right away with his kid on christmas morning yeah no that's a um, super so, smart idea. so what led me into this story was that uh as she was teaching him uh he would make a move and she's like oh Okay, you can definitely make that move. You know, but you know she didn't do this every time because that'd yeah, probably yeah. get annoying. But she's like, but if you did this, then I won't win, right? Or you know, or you know, so kind of you know, explaining strategy even you know as you're going along, mm -hmm. like, uh, oh, are you sure you want to do that? This is the you know, yeah, that's a, especially in teaching games when you're teaching newer players in any kind of. Uh, I mean, I guess it's maybe not the same thing in say role playing games. Right, uh, but with like collectible card games, you can definitely be like, person says, "I'm going to play this," and you can go, "Okay, well, you can," but you can see here why this might be different or this might work better because building those kind of gateways in the person's brain as they're playing allows them to then start to understand the rules a little bit better. Right. If you were just to be like, let the game play out as it goes, and then they just lose because they're not doing it right, or right. I mean, you're obviously going to tell them if something if they're doing something against the rules. Right. You're you're sh basically you're shortening the feedback loop. And that helps them learn faster. Exactly, exactly. Um, that feedback loop is super important for getting it so that they can start to make the connections in their head themselves a little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, but you still also, you know, uh, there's very few games out there that I've ever played where I like, like we play it through one time and then I'm like, okay, from now on it's all, you know, all bets are off. You know, the, the gloves are off. It still takes a couple of times. I mean, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the gloves are off anyway, because if the gloves are off, I will probably lose. That's just the way that works. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it's about having fun. I think that's right. kind of an important thing, too, is, again, if you tr if you find out, you're, 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 you know, you're trying to get your kids to play, and they're just not interested. You know, or you're trying to get your spouse to play something, and they're just not interested. Like, don't push it. You know right. what I mean? Don't be like, well, I'm sure after the 10th time you play Carcassonne, you'll you'll understand right yeah no it definitely is a thing where you play it and then kind of gauge their enjoyment of it see right. at the end of the game be like so what'd you think you know whatever and they may have questions about the rules they may have questions about um format they may be like well i didn't really enjoy it and here's the reasons why and then that can either help you to figure out maybe they're just not into this type of game maybe they're not into tabletop gaming at all or maybe they're just not into this specific game right and there's something else that's near it that or, or adjacent to right. it, you know, in, in, within games. Because Lord knows there's a couple of games out there. We have, we are spoiled for for choice. Mm. You know what I mean? As this, we've been recording this podcast for about 40-ish minutes, and I think three games have come out while we've been doing it. Oh, at, uh, least. at least. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, that that's, a, I think, an important thing also to keep track of is the, you know, understanding, like be empathetic to your family member that you're trying to get involved right. in this, you know. Um, right. Yeah. Do it as a understand. Remember why you're doing it. Yeah. If, if you're doing it because you want to be competitive with them and they want to be competitive with you, then by all means be competitive. Sure. Sure. But if you're doing it just so you can spend time with that person, enjoy. And have the, a good time. And have a good time. Do something that you're both enjoying and having a good time. At. Yeah. I'm a big fan of. Uh, I believe that games should be fun. Well, that, yeah, that, that's no, not I, what games are made for. No, though. no, that's I think what games are made for. Oh. For, for for fun. Uh, so yeah, definitely keep that in mind when trying to get your um, your family members to 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 kind of get into that stuff. 
what do we think about conventions? Do you take a, in my mind, mm -hmm. if you're going to go to a local convention, it should probably not be the first time that your uh, spouse or, 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 or child or, or family member or whatever, this should not be their first rodeo. I'm not saying it shouldn't be their first convention because that, that doesn't make any sense if they never went to a convention because <laughs> that wouldn't, like they have to go to their first convention. But I don't know that you're like, hey, you're interested in learning to play board games. Mm -hmm. Let's not ever play one at our house and just go to a convention. Oh, two yeah, to three def to four def definitely, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, and, and maybe even if you have played at home, right? that doesn't mean you have to play at the convention. So you you sure. could take like uh, you could take them to the convention um, because there's other things to do at the convention than just right. All, yep. You know, you a good convention is going to have a vending hall. Uh, sometimes, uh, man, we've seen what have we seen at conventions like the foam swords and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, kids, larping. Kids dig that. Fun you know? larping. Yeah. Yeah, like where it's just like it's not like a full blown larp. It's just basically like the foam right. sword. You know, battles or whatever. Uh, people making pancake uh, art. <sighs> See, you brought that up again. Dang it. I, I, I wish I... <laughs> there, we were at a convention in Madison back in October? Yeah, I think so. Or yeah. November. It was November. Was it? I thought it was right over... No, it was right over uh, Halloween, wasn't it? It was like it was right after. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, it, But there was a, a person there who was, who had all, was making pancake art. They had all these tubes yep. of different colored pancake batter, and then they would like draw things on the griddle kind of in reverse because you have to put the yeah. first things down first and then cover them as you're like kind of working and, and then and you flip and, it over and, and it was yeah the word like the, when they were doing like the words and you stuff do it backwards. Like backwards and uh yeah. yeah no it was crazy i don't even i can't even think about, make my brain work that way but the thing is is that they were doing portraits yeah you know? and not only that but they would record it as they were doing it and then send you an email with the link so that you could like put it on your instagram or whatever right. and see and it was super cool and i was like looked at it and i'm like that's neat and then i didn't do it and i should have done it yeah dang it anyway well, but but the, why are we talking about pancakes? Oh, because, because other things do at conventions. Yeah, yeah, and, no, and, definitely. And and just you know, having you know like bringing that spouse to your your favorite convention and, mm -hmm. and stuff, so that maybe they can see what you like about the hobby. Where the, you know don't don't make them feel pressured like oh, we're going to the convention and I signed us up for a team tournament, so right, yeah, you yeah. have a couple months to get your army together and we're gonna do this yeah yeah no I'll go there and they can see all that like the, what, all these cool models have been painted or see all these people like rolling and laughing and having fun playing their rpgs or all the cool new demo games that are out there yeah or whatever you know excitement that you're just basically surrounding them with a bunch of other enthusiasts that are basically going to show them that hey there's a lot of people doing this that are having fun and they'll go oh okay this isn't just my weird significant other or weird father right yeah this yeah. is a whole group of people you know it's like uh i'm not a big car person but uh they have like a oktoberfest every year in town they have a mm -hmm. little car show downtown where yeah, they have yeah. a, and like classic cars yeah and classic like cars yeah. and stuff and people are and i you know for something to do we've, we've gone to it a few times and man if someone had you know if i had you know that money to spend at that point and someone said hey we're gonna fix up an old car together by the time I'm walking through that, I, I might think about doing that. It's just there's something infectious about all these people that are really passionate about what they're doing, being and, around those people. Yeah, and most tabletop games are cheaper than classic cars. Yes. Not all, but the most. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, and I think that, yeah, you're right. I think that there's something to be said about, like, if you've got a, a kid or a, a spouse or whatever who's starting to, to see an interest in this stuff, you've played some games and things like that at home, when you... If you go to a convention, I'm not saying you go to Gen Con. That's that's a that's a that's a hill to climb. I'm talking about going to a small local convention, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, you can, I think, really help to um, you know invigorate their idea of like what it is to play a game, right. to, to play tabletop and that's, games. And that might be where they get inspired, right? And they might see something there that they're like. Hey, this looks like a cool game. Let's pick this up. And right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things to see at, at, at good conventions, and they there may be a game that's interesting to them that they didn't know about. You know, right. and then now that's just and hopefully thing even demo play. before you buy too. Right. Exactly. And also going to these conventions, like when I go, I end up going to a lot of conventions for work and stuff like that. And I go either alone or I go sometimes with you or whatever for work stuff. Um, but being able to go, say, with a spouse or being able to take your kids to a local mm -hmm. convention is just quality time right there. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as they're interested. Like, if they go and they hate it and they just want to be playing 
Nintendo or whatever the right, kids right. like these days, uh, then then you know that's all right, fine. We're not going to do that for a while. Maybe we'll try it again later when you're right. a little bit older. That's great. But um, you know, if they have shown some interest previous, and now you go to this, this can definitely kind of spur them along and get them more interested. One caveat that yes. I, I will definitely uh, uh, as a, as a warn people: yes, yeah, yeah. don't do this if you have not been to that convention before yourself. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because I made that mistake. Okay. Uh, went to a convention. I'm going to leave the convention name out because I don't think it was particularly that convention's fault. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to explain the hobby and how great it is, but I didn't really understand how the convention was working and where to go and what to do. So I was trying to figure things out while still trying to entertain and keep interest levels. And it stressed me out, stressed him out, and we spent a little bit of time and then decided to head back. And Right. Yeah. No, definitely. If you're going to do this, make sure it's not your first rodeo. Like I would definitely, yeah. if this is a convention you've been to in the past, because not only is it maybe that the convention is not conducive to kids or, you know, as far as the actual, uh, you know, like the, the interactions, yeah. there may be also things at some of these conventions that maybe you don't want your kids attached to for, mm. or, or, you know, to expose to, I guess. Right. You know what I mean? There's, that's, it's not... Because not all, I mean, a lot of conventions, most conventions are family friendly. Yeah. But there are probably some that are not. Mm -hmm. So that might be something to think about as well. Um, do we have anything else? Uh, I think the the only note I see that we haven't covered, oh, is uh, is this one, is uh, be, be okay to kind of stretch your wings and, and uh, maybe learn together with them so that maybe there's an intimidation factor if they're like, well, Adam's been playing 40K and painting all of his life, so uh, I can't get into that game. I with interesting. It. Well, you kind of talked about that with, like, Pokemon. Like, you got into playing the Pokemon with the kids, even though it's not necessarily your yeah. jam. Uh, yeah, so, no, I mean, that's, that is that is true. I mean, sometimes there's something, like, if you're trying to get, like if, like, if you're a person who's like, I only play board games. Mm -hmm. I have no other interest in the other genres, and I only play board games, or I only play these specific board games. Um, and then it does not seem like your kids or your spouse are interested, then you're going to probably need to sort of step outside your comfort zone a right. little bit and maybe play um, something else that, right. they, that they're like interested in. And, if and, you're, if and you're you still don't trying to be interested in right. getting them into tabletop. And you don't need to be an expert before you're, you're, you do it too. You can do it like, hey, yeah, this looks neat. Let's, I think let's, learning let's, together is, let's grab is, this is and, a super good idea. Yeah, and, and learn no, it I together. Agree. Like, get, Let's get into this together. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely, definitely. Because it might be a game that either you're tangentially kind of like interested in, you know, like it's maybe a, a gateway style board game slash miniatures game that you're kind of interested in, but it might be easier to, to get you know started with right. with your your spouse or your kids, um, and or it might be something that's completely outside that they've shown some interest in, and that's right. yeah, I yeah, like you know, maybe, you know, if I had a spouse that was really in the Game of Thrones, sure, maybe. D and E, but maybe like the like Song of uh, Fire and Ice, Song of Ice and Fire, Ice and Fire Thank from uh, uh, Cool Mini again. Yeah, they they did a um, a miniatures game, and I've got a, a good friend whose uh, girlfriend is super into the books, and so they got started getting into the miniatures game. You See? Know? So yep. yeah, and um, and it's not probably a mini game I would pick out for sure. myself, right? But if I if I had someone that was like, oh, I'd be like, okay, yeah, let's learn this and try it out. And yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a it's a rank and flank style game where you're moving groups of units in like a rectangle and stuff like more that. More like what you would when you think of a historical. Like yeah, whereas I'm more interested in games where everybody kind of moves individually and stuff like that. So I generally don't like rank and flanks. But if my wife was like, I'm super interested in the concept behind this or whatever, then I would be like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll give it a try. So that's that makes sense. Well, uh, thanks to yeah. to Brian for the yeah. question. That was super uh, helpful, um, and I think it, I think it's a good subject just because it is nice to be able to try to find hobbies that you can do with your significant other, mm -hmm. with your kids, stuff like that. Um, stuff that's not just sitting around watching TV, you know, or whatever. Um, yeah, so there we go. Thanks again for listening to this episode of the Game 4 Podcast. If you've got questions or comments and you're watching on YouTube, then please leave a comment below. If you're listening via your favorite podcast player or just aren't into the whole YouTube comments section thing, then you can feel free to reach out to us via email at podcast at imgame4.com. You should also let us know if you've got ideas for topics or questions or all the kinds of stuff at podcast at imgame4.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, and TikTok, technically, now, too. 
Oh yeah, I did that. Yeah, I haven't used it yet, but no, it's, it's there. It's, it's there. coming. Though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and lastly, to find out more about the Game Four platform designed to connect tabletop gamers, please check out our website at www.imgame4.com. That is www.iamgameforum.com. Thank you.